Well, hello there. I'm Susan Radojevic. Previously in the Provocateur video blog, we introduced two of the four value terms used to determine if business events are creating value. The terms are event value creation, which is what every business event should be producing, and event value preservation, an event result that shouldn't occur. If you missed the video blog, you can catch it on the MNIT's website. In this video blog, we are going to learn about adding value to events and why it's only a short-term fix and not the same as event value creation. We are also going to look at a few areas where the classic meeting and event community's practices are significantly contributing to event value destruction. Ouch. It was in the late 80s, while working for a third-party planning organization, that I realized the impact technology was going to have on our lives, in business, and on business events. I was part of a planning team working on an international conference, and our client installed a computer in our office. The computer had a small green screen and a clunky typewriter keyboard. Our client informed us that instead of faxing and mailing conference registrations, the registration details would be sent using the computer. I was tasked with the management of 4,000 plus conference registrations and had to figure out how to use the computer. In the beginning, it was a daunting task. And after many sleepless nights, we discovered that the computer enabled us to create a process that added value to the conference and our client. Adding value is when an organization starts to listen to their clients and customers and takes their input seriously into account in their decision making. In the story I just shared, we listened and it saved us time and made us more effective. In the last decade, technology has come a long way. Tablets, mobile apps, and social media networks are a growing presence in business. The good news is the classic meeting and event community supports the use of social media tools for the purpose of engaging with participants before, during, and after the event, and for creating hybrid events. The bad news is hybrid events and social media engagement tools have been around for a few years. Therefore, they shouldn't be talked about as though they are groundbreaking. And the way the engagement tools are used is more aligned with adding value to the way event logistics are delivered. While this produces short-term results, it offers little long-term value to CEOs whose role is to measure results against investment to gauge if the results are creating value for all stakeholders. A more effective approach to add value that will ultimately create value is to leverage interactive technologies to design a hybrid environment where participants can co-create and customize products and services. Makes perfect sense? Except, in the 2012 MPI Business Barometer, co-creating and customizing products and services with participants using technology was ranked dead last on Classic Planner's list of 16 technology priorities. And allowing more participation at live events was ranked number 14. Clearly, the Classic Meeting and Event community is out of sync with the evolution taking place outside of their bubble. If I believed in conspiracy theories, I'd say there is one big conspiracy going on in the community. Why is there such a need to hold on to the status quo and such a reluctance to embrace in innovation and experiment? Sadly, this narrow-mindedness that methods, tools, and technology without a direct line to travel and hospitality event logistics is some sort of a threat to business events is very much misguided. It's not business events or the methods, tools, and technology that are the threat. 
It's the existing community's business model that's a threat. And did I mention that the model is also broken? Sorry, folks. I understand it's a tough pill to swallow. However, the writing is on the wall, and it's been there a while. More emphasis needs to be placed on business event outputs. It's event outputs that help leaders bring about a lasting and positive change in behavior and attitude in people. If the community would switch it up and change the conversation to event outputs, they would register on corporate leaders' radar, and leaders would find it difficult to justify canceling events. Another example of where the community is maintaining status quo is using strategic meeting management as a standalone solution. This approach only reinforces CEOs' perception that business events are a cost center and an outgrowth of travel and hospitality. And the notion that implementing a strategic meeting management program will produce a return on investment is nothing more than smoke and mirrors, folks. A return on investment is measured on new revenue generated, not on budgets that are reduced by leveraging vendor spend through the consolidation of vendors. These are just a few examples that demonstrate how classic planners and the meeting and event community are practicing event value destruction. Einstein said that insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Event value destruction is doing the same thing over and over without questioning anything. Aligned and value creation business events can play a key role in today's businesses. Only if a new commitment to a new course of action is made, a commitment that places corporate leaders' goals at the center of all business events, and where event outputs lead and drive event value creation. And finally, let me ask you, what's the risk of separating business event outputs from travel and hospitality event logistics. For The Provocateur, I'm Cesar Rudojevic. See you next time.